Have you ever wondered how artificial intelligence could transform the way we solve complex problems? With Microsoft's latest release, Orca 2, we are stepping into a new era of AI capabilities. The groundbreaking AVA AI model, featuring two large language models, one with 7 billion parameters and the other with 13 billion parameters represents more than just an incremental update. It marks a significant leap forward, surpassing its predecessors and even larger models in crucial areas. With the recent release of Orca 2 by Microsoft, artificial intelligence has hit a major milestone. This new AVA AI model can fully interact with natural language and do tasks that require complex reasoning. This article will tell you everything you need to know about Orca 2, which is a big step forward in the area of AI. Language models are getting bigger, which means that the world of AI is always changing. Orca 2 is Microsoft's newest attempt to find out what smaller language models, especially those with 13 billion parameters or less, can do. These smaller models are better than their bigger versions in many ways, such as being easier to train, requiring less computing power, and being more cost-effective. The Orca 2 model has between 7 and 13 billion parameters and was made by fine-tuning Llama 2-based models on high-quality simulated data. Orca 2 is different from its predecessors because it is meant to copy the way bigger models like GPT-4 think and reason. Orca 2 can learn from GPT-4's rich signals and directions, which let it use a variety of reasoning methods and complete difficult tasks. It can be hard to work with smaller language models like Orca 2. It's not easy to make sure that these models can do complex jobs that require advanced thinking skills well and correctly. Despite these problems, though, smaller types have many advantages. It's easier to teach, set up, and run them. They also use less energy and computing power, which makes them more useful and affordable for businesses of all kinds. Personalized high-quality simulated data are used to fine-tune the base model Llama 2 to make Orca 2. By copying the way bigger models like GPT-4 think, this process lets Orca 2 get around the problems that smaller models have. Orca 2 learns from lots of different signals, like explanation traces, thought processes that are broken down into steps, and complicated directions given by teacher assistants in ChatGPT. Through its training, Orca 2 has learned a number of different ways to think and reason. Step-by-step -step processing, recalling and creating information, extracting relevant content, and giving direct replies are all things it can do. Orca 2 can also pick from different ways to solve problems depending on the job. Bigger models like GPT-4 can handle difficult tasks directly, but Orca 2 works better when tasks are broken down into steps. Orca 2 has done amazingly well on a number of measures. It does really well on the GSM 8K dataset, which tests math thinking with multiple steps. Orca 2 works as well as or better than models 5 to 10 times its size, even ones that are about the same size. On top of that, it shows how well it does on tough jobs like IQ tests, logic puzzles, and word problems. Even though it's smaller, the Orca 2 shows its worth by performing as well on certain benchmarks as bigger models like the GPT-4 and the Llama 2 Chat 70B. This accomplishment is especially impressive when you consider that Orca 2 did not have to solve any math questions during its training. Orca 2's ability to do well in zero-shot situations shows how well it can generalize and change. Now let's see how good Orca 2 is at mathematical reasoning. Orca 2 is very good at using math to solve problems. On measures like the GSM 8K dataset, it does better than the models of the same size, including its predecessor, Orca. This set of data includes grade school word problems with a variety of language requirements that need more than one step of numbers. Orca 2 is just as good at solving these issues as or even better than bigger models like GPT-4 and Llama 2 Chat 70B. Orca 2 shows what it can do on difficult benchmarks like the Big Bench Hard Dataset, as well as in mathematical thinking. IQ tests, logic puzzles, and word problems are some of the tasks in this dataset that require advanced thinking skills. Orca 2 does better on this test than models of the same size, and is on par with ChatGPT. 
showing that it can handle difficult jobs in new settings. The ORCA-2 also does well on academic and business tests such as the SAT, LSAT, GR, and GMAT. ORCA-2 can answer questions by using its natural language understanding and reasoning skills. Even in situations where it doesn't have access to outside information sources, these accomplishments show how flexible and adaptable ORCA-2 is in many areas. Microsoft has made ORCA-2 open source, which means that reverse archers and developers can use it and make it better. This choice encourages people to work together, do more study, and line up smaller and larger models. Because ORCA2 is open source, it encourages teams to work together to create, test, and improve language models for the good of the AI community. There are clear changes between ORCA2 and its predecessor, ORCA, even though they share a number of parameters. The base model for ORCA2 is LLAMA2, while the model for ORCA is the bigger GPT-4. ORCA2's reasoning skills have gotten better thanks to its training on high-quality fake data and its ability to use different approaches for different kinds of jobs. ORCA2 also does better than ORCA on a number of tests, including the GSM-8K dataset. ORCA2 puts an emphasis on natural language contact by making texts, conversations, and explanations that flow smoothly. The way ORCA2 talks is more like a person because it uses rhetorical questions, everyday language, and even symbols. It can change the way it talks and the tone it uses depending on the situation and the people it's talking to, making the interaction more natural and interesting. Compared to its predecessors, ORCA2 is more reliable and strong. It can handle more types of inputs and outputs, and is better at dealing with mistakes and unknowns. The model is made to find and avoid biases and ethical issues in its data and results, making sure that its actions and choices are clear and accountable. There are ethical issues and possible biases with ORCA2, just like there are with any other language model. In new situations, there is a chance that the model will give answers that are unfair or misleading, or that it will go against morals and social values. Because language models can have such a big effect on society, it is very important that ORCA2 follow human values and not hurt people. In order to make ORCA2 more moral, one idea is to use reinforcement learning from human input, or RHF. In this method, the model is trained with human input and guidance, which helps it learn what is good, safe, and responsible. Regrettably, ORCA2 doesn't use RHF or other similar safety measures right now. This shows that it needs more work to make sure it is reliable and in line with human values. People who want to use ORCA2 can either run it on their computers using Python environments and interfaces like LM Studio, or they can use online sites like Hugging Face to get to it. Because ORCA2 is so flexible, it can be used for everyday jobs like answering questions, making text, summarizing information, and even writing code. It's also possible for users to train ORCA2 with their own data and make it fit their needs. Even though ORCA2 has a lot of promise, it is important to use it in a smart way. People who use the model should know that it might make inappropriate or harmful content, especially in places it doesn't know much about. It is very important to make sure that the information that ORCA2 gives you is correct and reliable, and not to use it for bad things. To get the most out of ORCA2 and keep bad effects to a minimum, it's important to respect other people's privacy and rights and follow its licensing agreements and rules for proper use. We've seen how ORCA2, with its advanced reasoning and natural language capabilities, challenges the norms of what smaller models can achieve. Its performance on complex benchmarks like the GSM 8K dataset and various academic tests is not just impressive, but thought-provoking. It raises the question, how far can AI go in mimicking and perhaps surpassing human reasoning? Well, ORCA2's achievements are both exciting and a bit daunting. It's thrilling to see AI tackle tasks that were once deemed exclusive to human intellect, but it also prompts reflection on the future role of AI in our lives. What are your thoughts on this balance between AI advancement and its implications? Let's continue this conversation in the comments, sharing insights and perspectives on the future of AI as shaped by innovations like ORCA2.